What's going to happen in the advancement of the metaverse and related technologies in the next year? Today, we look at the top 10 trends we're likely to see happen in 2022. And today's cocktail is New Year's Ready. It's a take on the classic French 75 we call the LV 75. So stick around to the end of the show to learn how you can make it and impress your friends at your virtual ball drop party during Meta Hour. Welcome to the final 2021 episode of Meta Hour in the Metaverse, a weekly podcast covering news and events surrounding the Metaverse, crypto, entertainment, and more. And of course, always ending with a Meta Hour cocktail you can make for your next Meta Hour. Today, we will look at a few trending articles from this week and then dive straight into the top 10 predictions we're likely to see around the Metaverse in 2022. But before we do... I've been seeing a lot of there is no metaverse news articles in the past week or so. If you remember from our early episodes, I've made a mention a few times that the, with a capital T, metaverse doesn't exist yet and likely won't for a while. What we have are a lot of small individual projects that call themselves a metaverse. And while I've continued to use that term to their benefit, it isn't technically true. It's like saying AOL was the internet, or even an internet, which in fact it was just a standalone information exchange platform, much like Prodigy and CompuServe were back in the 80s and 90s. If you're too young to know what they are, just know they were before the internet was widely used and you had to dial into them directly. What we would define as the metaverse, and really there is no option for multiple metaverses, is an interconnected network where a user can navigate a fictional, spatial-based world seamlessly with social interactions. Some have called it the visual web, something that was attempted a few decades ago. The metaverse, by definition, is a single entity, much like there is only one internet, not a bunch of standalone internets. The metaverse will likely require exceedingly more computer power and resources that are available today, plus a widely agreed-upon network, protocol, and development language that can be used by anyone, anywhere. So why start this episode with this definition again when you're probably thinking to yourself, yes, we know there is no the metaverse, but we're enjoying exploring whatever metaverse-esque worlds are popping up now. Well, because as people start to try and batten down the semantics of the word metaverse, it means the idea is gaining a lot more public awareness, which in turn will drive more adoption and thus more development towards the metaverse. So today, after the news, we'll look at what could be in store for progress towards the metaverse in 2022. In this week's top news, we have a big win from Facebook, aka Meta. The Oculus iPhone app, the one you use to connect your Oculus to apps and payments and more, was the most popular app downloaded on Christmas Day in the App Store. Beating out TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, and Instagram. A few have said this Christmas the Oculus was like the Nintendo Christmas release back in the day. A device that is somewhat unknown, but brings with it an excitement unlike a normal gaming console release. That excitement drove a lot of people to jump straight into connecting their Oculuses and start downloading content straight away. Jamestown, the real estate company that owns One Times Square, which is the tower where the infamous New Year's Eve ball drop occurs in New York City, has purchased 170 parcels of virtual land for an undisclosed amount in Decentraland in order to recreate the one Times Square building as the first virtual high-rise. The company plans to recreate the ball drop and allow anyone in the world to be a part of the New York experience by visiting via their Decentraland avatar. You can too by visiting coordinates negative 106 by negative 119. The event starts at 11 p.m. tonight and the ball drop will occur at midnight Eastern time. Paris Hilton, of all people, who continues to keep her name around the Web3 world, will be hosting a New Year's Eve party in the Roblox virtual space. You can stop by Paris World, which is a recreation of her Beverly Hills estate, and listen to her DJ set. Of course, you can also buy things from her, like virtual clothing, or the opportunity to take a ride on a jet ski in virtual space. you got to pay for that. My eyes are rolling if you can't see. Buyer beware. I think this next piece of news is right in line with our definition of the metaverse. Ready Player Me, a metaverse startup, raised $13 million to expand their metaverse platform. 
The platform is based around the idea that the actual metaverse will be thousands of interconnected virtual worlds. And based on that idea, they're developing an avatar platform that allows users to create one avatar and it can be universally moved between virtual worlds versus having to create a new one every time you want to try out one platform versus another. It's these kind of projects that will ultimately start to shape how the metaverse becomes a universally accessible world. We're on the brink of a new year, so today we're looking at what might come in 2022 that is connected to the metaverse development with our top 10 predictions and trends for the metaverse in 2022, starting with number 10. Number 10, new releases of AR and VR headset tech. Expect hardware to be a major part of 2022. Facebook's marketing push of the Oculus will catapult others who are already planning 2022 releases to bring VR headsets into the homes of many times more people. Apple's AR glasses should be announced in late 2022, and I'm really excited to see how they plan to interact in AR. Meta's Oculus 3 and Cambria headsets will likely release in 2022. The new versions should bring updated resolution lenses, a less bulky frame, and color pass-through cameras, which means being able to layer VR elements into real-world views for hybrid AR-VR experiences. Apara is a new-to-the-game headset currently in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign. With their low $50,000 goal, they're almost at $800,000 raised and still have until February 12th. Sony's PSVR 2 headset is rumored to be in the works as well and will get the benefit of connecting to the powerful graphics processor of the PS5. If you've used an Oculus before, you understand how this space will become very competitive as the cost of developing VR tech gets much cheaper. Number 9. Virtual Land I have to admit I have a hard time backing the millions of dollars being spent on virtual land in what are still relatively empty platforms like Decentraland and The Sandbox. If we're tracking the metaverse as being an interconnected virtual world built to span the internet, then it's likely standalone platforms like Decentraland and Sandbox don't stand much of a chance over time. But besides that point, I do think the land grab will continue into 2022 at a feverish pace. Records will continue to be broken as investors with endless supplies of capital worry about missing out on what could be an easy flip opportunity especially as the crypto coins associated to these worlds might bounce back in 2022, given how we've seen the market do time and time again. Number 8. Virtual social engagement will expand greatly, as will virtual harassment, and someone needs to start to monitor it. As headsets fly off the shelves and the public start getting their heads around virtual worlds and interactions, an unfortunate aspect of bullying and harassment will quickly increase. Much like any social network, there is even less control in today's online metaverse platforms. I envision next year might bring self-governing platforms of people who act like Reddit mods to enforce proper behavior in places like virtual chat rooms. Unfortunately, we'll see a lot more news of people being harassed by faceless and nameless entities before it gets any better. Number 7. NFTs will continue to be generated and the masses will continue to buy them claiming they are part of the metaverse. Don't expect a decrease in NFTs over the next year. Brands, games, and artists will continue to pump out an exceedingly endless supply of non-fungible tokens that will be tied to everything imaginable. And while this might sound like a problem, it will actually increase the desire and value of certain truly unique real-life and digital assets. With games creating an NFT for every possible item available, the general public creating clones upon clones of popular digital art, virtual land platforms offering parcels of NFT-tagged land, and brands creating wearable items for virtual worlds or tokens assigned to real-life clothing, we will start to see a natural culling of those items, which are useless or undesirable. This will create a clear distinction between what has actual value against everything else. And love it or hate it, some of the art is here to stay. This line between collectible and everything else will become more distinct and the public will stop getting so jazzed up about anything that uses the term dropping. Number six, Hollywood will jump into the metaverse. Well, at least what they assume is the metaverse. 
With headsets on the rise, we're going to see the start of Hollywood and the music industry releasing live event and movie screenings in VR. They'll dub it an experience in the metaverse. But it'll still just be a VR concert streamed live in a VR video app. It won't matter, though, if it's the metaverse or not, because fans will devour the virtual reality experience, buy more hardware, and thus keep moving the metaverse development chains forward. You can also be certain NFT collectibles will be sold at every single VR event. Speaking of Hollywood, if you haven't tried watching a movie on the Oculus, you're missing out on a very strange and fulfilling experience. The screen presented to you in the headset looks the scale of an actual movie screen, with options of it achieving almost an IMAX size. If Hollywood starts to make it easy to feed 4K versions of their movies to VR devices, it might truly be the end of the movie theater entirely, though obviously not in 2022. Number five, the workplace will start to embrace the idea of virtual reality. Okay, I'm not going to say metaverse for this one because this will truly be a productivity-based application of virtual reality and not metaverse-related. But given the constant surges of COVID, we're likely not going to see a return to the standard workplace anytime soon, or really ever. And as I've mentioned before, the Zoom video chat model is becoming increasingly tiresome and ineffective at fostering productive meetings. The constant need to keep yourself engaged with those on the chat is far more tiring than the real-world equivalent. However, avatar-based in-person meetings could be a game-changing way to host work-focused meetings especially ones that allow for back-and-forth interactions with office tools such as multiple screens, whiteboards, roundtables, and so forth. Being able to have a large screen in a virtual meeting room and then point to it by virtual hands with an avatar would make screen sharing feel like passing notes on stone tablets. Even if you're looking at an avatar version of someone else, if they are seated in a round table and you can look from one to another, it will greatly decrease that need to stay constantly engaged with a gallery of floating heads all staring at each other. I'm very bullish on this concept and we'll keep an eye out in 2022 as it starts to come together. Number four, gaming. This is almost a given and it's not really metaverse directly related, but it's going to be a big change in 2022. We're going to see huge increases in the number of apps and games available that try and tout the metaverse term. But as we're well educated, those games won't be a metaverse, as the metaverse isn't a game. But gaming will draw a huge amount of people whose use of a VR headset means they will want more social experiences and thus it will help foster further needs for metaverse-connected environments. So that's why this is number four. Number three. Influencers will find a way to profit in metaverse platforms. Right now, YouTube and Instagram influencers haven't yet crossed the virtual boundary in droves. The number of people and advertising opportunities doesn't yet exist. But I think with the increase in hardware options and the growing number of people trying to find their way into some kind of platform touting itself as a metaverse, influencers will start to find ways to profit. With celebs like Snoop Dogg and Paris Hilton taking up residences, and them having a large enough following, it's only natural others will try and follow suit looking for ad and promotional dollars. Meta doesn't yet have a plausible way to do this, except Horizon Worlds, but I don't think Horizon is going to see the number of users required to draw them in, especially when Horizon can't even handle that many concurrent users at one time. We will start to see influencer programs that offer tokens in exchange for using the platforms to promote themselves. If AR takes hold, this will be an easier entry for Instagrammers to use real-life spaces to interact with their followers in AR spaces and then share that live online for others to experience. Number two, health and wellness concerns. It should not be a surprise to us at this point that we, as a people, in any given time, are in a massive ongoing experiment. Silicon Valley releases technology without totally understanding the impacts. Pharma companies release drugs with sometimes limited long-term understanding on our health. The education system updates it to itself to its best ability on how we should learn. The food and drug boards approve certain foods on knowing what 10 years of consumption will do to our bodies. The societies of the future have 20-20 hindsight vision and benefit from watching 10 to 20 years in the past and constantly updating laws recommendations, and procedures after learning the negative impacts of what we thought was safe at the time. 
I don't think anyone has done the full research to determine what kind of effect virtual reality will have on our brains, especially in young children. We've learned that babies and young children who get a lot of phone time end up with difficulty interacting with others, problems with attention, and more. VR is a very different experience than staring at a phone. A phone or tablet is engrossing, and you can quickly burn 30 minutes on the toilet without realizing it. But VR is overwhelming and more likely to be addictive. When you come out of the Oculus, you feel the impact of returning to the real world. There's a certain allure to spending time in there, not even to play a game or watch a film, but just to escape and look around at the pretty landscape. In 2022, we're likely going to see a lot of warnings about young children spending too much time in a headset, from vision issues to behavioral problems. And with the huge sales of the Oculus this year, and thus the likelihood that parents will plop their kids in there to babysit them, just like they do with tablets, I think we're going to get some pretty quick feedback at just what it does to young children's minds. And if the manufacturers are smart, they'll start adding warnings to avoid costly lawsuits. And really, it won't just be children. There is just not the data yet at what prolonged virtual reality can do to our psyche. And our number one spot is for AR world mapping. I think this is going to be a very fast-moving power play which will create a real hybrid metaverse. With the news that Niantic is building a global AR map, others are going to be quick to pick up the chase. AR has the lowest boundary of entry to creating a true metaverse, with companies like Apple soon to be pushing a highly powerful AR glasses option if an open-sourced AR protocol is released allowing standalone AR locations to exist. With the ability for anyone to launch an interactive AR experience, we will have the first true metaverse. It will require a person to be physically in a space, but that space will carry an alternate reality that anyone can interact with, which fits our definition of the metaverse. I'd keep my eyes on AR in 2022 as the top developing tech in the metaverse universe. And those are the top 10 predictions for metaverse-related trends in 2022. From hardware releases to AR development to VR impact on health studies, it's going to be a fast-paced year for all things Metaverse. As today is New Year's Eve, we have a Meta Hour cocktail that is a slightly different take on the champagne-based cocktail, the French 75, which we call the LV75, named because of the addition of Chambord a liquor first produced in the Loire Valley in the 17th century. The classic French 75, which dates back to World War I and was created at the New York Bar in Paris, France, is made up of champagne, gin, sugar, and lemon. The LV 75, we add a subtle taste of raspberry to balance the acidity of the lemon. You'll want to make this one tonight as you toast away the last days of 2021 and look into the unknown future of 2022. I'd like to say it can't get much worse, but I feel like I said that on the eve of 2021 and not sure this year was a big improvement. But I'll stay positive that 2022 will bring a year full of new technological advances to counter the issues we've dealt with in 2021 and we'll all be better for it. To make the LV75, you'll need one ounce of gin. You can choose a juniper forward one like Bombay or Tangeray to balance against the other flavors. Half an ounce Chambord half an ounce fresh lemon juice, two ounces of champagne, or however much you need to fill your glass, and almost frozen fresh raspberry for garnish. Start by mixing the gin, chambord, and lemon juice together in a cocktail shaker with ice. Shake the mixture for a solid 20 seconds and then strain into a champagne flute. Add the chilled raspberry to the glass, then slowly pour the champagne into the glass, careful not to agitate the bubbles. Then serve it immediately. And that is the LV75, a Metaverse-inspired cocktail enjoyable for tonight's New Year's Eve celebration. I hope the end of 2021 treats you well, and the beginning of 2022 treats you even better. We'll be back next week with more Metaverse news and happenings, and of course a lot more Meta Hour cocktails for you to enjoy during your next Meta Hour. As always, I'm Ben Stanley wishing you a Happy New Year's. Cheers. If you have questions or want us to feature a cocktail you enjoy in the metaverse, or simply want to just say hello, email us at 
ask at themetahour.com and help spread the word by hitting subscribe on your podcast app. More subscribes helps us get discovered. This has been a production of Meta Hour, produced and written by Ben Stanley.